Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, dear students. In this session, we will be studying the lower caste movements originated in South India as well as the non Brahmin movements originated in South India. First of all, non Brahmin movement in Madras. non brahmin movement in madras first of all we will be looking at the circumstances circumstances behind the origin of non brahmin movements in madras presidency in madras presidency the brahmins formed only 3.3 percent of the total population However, the Brahmins formed only 3.3 percent of the total population. The Brahmins dominated the society. The Brahmins dominated the society. How did the Brahmins dominate the society? Dominate the society. And the Brahmins dominated the society by serving as intermediary between God and man. By the ritualistic power, the Brahmins dominated the society in Madras presidency, even though they formed only 3.3 percent of the total population. <coughs> Since the Brahmins were the literate class, traditionally they were literate class. Once English administration was introduced and the English system of learning started, Brahmins were the first to study English and they got employment in British services. They began to dominate, they began to dominate bureaucracy. at the lower level in British service. It created fear among the minds of the non Brahmins. It resulted the growth of the non Brahmin movements in Madras presidency. It was one of the reasons behind the growth of non Brahmin movements in Madras presidency the Brahmins, even though they formed only 3.3 percent of the total population in Madras presidency, they dominated the society through their ritualistic power and English system of learning was introduced. The Brahmins were the first to learn English and they joined the servi British services as lower bureaucrats. It created fear among the minds of the non Brahmins. It was one of the reasons behind the start of the non Brahmin movement. Second reason, what was the second reason behind the start of the non Brahmin movement in Madras presidency? Tamil Renaissance. Tamil Renaissance. Based on the classical works Pattu Pattu, 
மணிமேகலை மணிமேகலை சிலப்பதிகாரம் தீஸ் தமிழ் ஒர்க்ஸ் பப்ளிஷ்டு பிட்வீன் எயிட்டீன் எயிட்டி செவன் அண்ட் நைன்டீன் நாட் ஃபோர் தீஸ் ஒர்க்ஸ் வேர் ஒரிஜினலி கம்போஸ்ட் தௌசண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் இயர்ஸ் பேக் டியூரிங் தி சங்கம் பீரியட் அண்ட் லேட்டர் சங்கம் பீரியட் பட் பிட்வீன் எயிட்டீன் எயிட்டி செவன் அண்ட் நைன்டீன் நாட் ஃபோர் தீஸ் கிளாசிக்கல் தமிழ் ஒர்க்ஸ் கோட் பப்ளிஷ்ட் from these works it became clear that the aryans distracted the superior dravidian civilization from the classical works there existed a superior dravidian civilization in tamil country from these works it became clear that the aryans suppressed this dravidian civilization including saiva siddhanta philosophy saiva siddhanta philosophy and he established the dominance of the aryans and sanskrit literature on these dravidians they distorted the superior dravidian culture and imposed a caste system it created a new sense of enthusiasm among the tamils these were the two reasons behind the growth of non brahmin movements in madras presidency one the superior position of the brahmins in society irked the non brahmins secondly through the publication of the classical works in tamil it demonstrated the superiority of dravidian culture in ancient and later periods with the publication of sangam works from these works it became clear that the aryans distorted the superior dravidian culture and established the caste system and the vedas these were the two reasons behind the growth of non brahmin movements in madras presidency the first non brahmin movement started in madras presidency was justice party it was founded in 1916 its original name was south indian liberal federation south indian liberal federation which was founded in 1916 it is popularly known as justice party who were the founders of justice party founders founders of the justice party were t n nair p tyagaraja jetti and c nadesh mudaliyar they were the founders of the justice party t n nair p tyagaraja chetty and c nadesh mudaliyar were the founders of the first non brahmin movement in modern india in madras presidency it was the justice party justice party claimed to protect the interest of non brahmins non brahmins including muslims non brahmin hindus 
Muslims, Christians and untouchables. Justice party claimed that they would try for the protection of the interest of non Brahmin Hindus, Muslims, Christians and untouchables. Their initial demand, what was the initial demand of the justice party? Reservation of seats, reservation of seats in provincial legislatures reservation of seats in provincial legislatures was the initial demand of the justice party later these demands changed along with the demand for adequate representation in provincial legislative councils they also demanded reservation reservation in public employment reservation in public employment reservation in educational field reservation in educational field and reservation in local boards their initial demand confined only reservation in provincial legislatures it later included reservation in public em employment reservation in education and reservation in local boards one of the main drawback of the justice party was that it confined among the non brahmin urban business group non brahmin urban business group and leading semintars and leading semintars it actually served the interest of urban business group and the feudal semintars it actually did not come for the emancipation of the lower caste only middle class hindus interest including the feudal landlords or semintars and urban business groups whose interest began to be protected by the justice party in this background e v ramaswami naikar e v ramaswami naikar he popularly known as periyar he earlier worked with the indian national congress he left from the indian national congress and founded self respect movement it gave a new twist and a new lease of life to non brahmin movements new twist and a new lease of life to the non brahmin movement he was born in erode in 1879 e v ramaswami naikar popularly known as periyar he was born in erode in 1879 even during childhood he rebelled against caste system he rebelled against caste system even during his childhood and participated in inter dining inter caste dining even during his childhood he revolted against the purity of caste system 
and took participated in intercast dining. He also later took participation in Vaikam Sadhyagraha. in 1924. In the Vaikam temple, the lower castes were not allowed to enter in Kerala, it was in Kerala. In Vaikam temple, lower castes were not allowed to enter to use the approach roads leading to Vaikam temple. And in order to open the approach road leading to Vaikam temple, Vaikam Sadhyagraha was organized. Periyar took participation in Vaikam Sadhyagraha in 1924, where he vehemently supported Harijans, the lower caste Hindus. Then the approach road leading to Vaikam was opened to lower caste because of Vaikam Sadhyagraha. In 1925, he started his newspaper, Kudi Arashu. Kudi Arashu was the newspaper started by Periyar or E. V. Damaswami Naikyar. In the same year, he left Congress party on an incident in which non Brahmin and Brahmin eastern facilities were segregated at a Gurugula school run by the Gurugula school run by the Congress party. In this school, separate facilities were made for dining of Brahmins and non Brahmins. On the question of this, E. B. Ramaswami Naikar left Congress party. Even he entered into conflict with conflict with Magatma Gandhi on Varnasrama. Dharma. That is a fourfold division of society into Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. He ended into argument even with the Mahatma Gandhi. Later, he visited Soviet Union. And he adopted Marxist, he, his own version of Marxist ideology to Dravidian ideology. He visited Soviet Union, he was attracted to Marxist ideology and he adopted his own version of Marxism to Dravidian ideology. His ideas on society, now we are going to analyze his ideas on society, his ideas on society. He attacked, he attacked religion, supremacy of the Brahmins, He vehemently opposed the caste system, religion and the supremacy of the Brahmins. He mainly argued for concept of equality, argued for concept of equality and dignity of human being, dignity of human being and 
and emancipation of women. Emancipation of women. He vehemently opposed religion, supremacy of Brahmins, and a caste system. He argued for equality in society, dignity of human being, and emancipation of women. Women were one of the most oppressed sections of the society during this time. For women, the most oppressed section what did periyar do for the emancipation of women women were the most oppressed section in the society he used his newspaper Kudi Arashu for the dissemination and articulation of the flights of the women and he argued that religion was mainly re responsible for in his publication Kudi Arashu he expressed that religion was responsible Vijin was responsible for subordinate status of women. Subordinate status of women. Kudia Rasu was used by Periyar for the emancipation of women. He elaborated the dealt with the flights of the women in his newspaper. In this newspaper, he argued that religion was responsible for the subordinate status of women. He argued that the services of Brahmin priest should not be used during birth or funerals, marriage. During these times, the services of the Brahmin priest should not be used. He argued for self respect marriages. Periyar or E. V. Ramaswamy Nakir argued for self respect marriages without the presence of Brahmin priests. Activism, activism of Periyar. He emphasized that occasional training, occasional training should be given to women. And secondly, education should be given. women for the freedom of women economic freedom occasional training should be provided to women and for freedom from the evils of caste system and subordinate position of women proper education should be given to women He argued that widow remarriage and the birth control should be the prerogatives, should be the prerogative of women. women should be allowed whether to whether they should remarry or not it should be left to women what kind of family planning measures should be adopted 
Ferriar argued that this widow remarriage and birth control were to be the prerogatives of women and they should be given freedom to decide whether they should remarry or not and what kind of birth control should they be adopted. Limit of the self respect movement started by limit of the res limit of the self respect movement started by Periyar or E. V. Ramaswamy Naikar. Like the Justice Party, the social base like the Justice Party, the social base of the self respect movement confined to the upper caste non Brahmins upper caste upper caste non Brahmins. It did not do much for the emancipation of the lowest strata of society in Madras presidency or the untouchables. The self respect movement was mainly confined to the upper caste non Brahmins. In 1944, the self respect movement, the self respect league the merged with the Justice Party. In 1944, the self respect league merged with the Justice Party to create Dravida Karagam. Dravida Kalagam. The Dravida Kalagam was created in 1944 with the merge of Self Respect League with the Justice Party. Once Dravida Kalagam was created, it assumed a character which was totally different from that conceived by Periyar. character of social reform movement completely changed completely changed once with the formation of dravida karagam it began to concentrate on narrow electoral politics narrow electric electoral politics likewise the justice party the self respect movement also confined its social base to the upper caste non brahmins it could not do much for the emancipation of the lowest strata of society. With the, the establishment of Dravida Karagam, it assumed a character which is totally different from that conceived by Periyar. It focused on narrow electoral politics. Now, the students may be able to know the circumstances behind the formation of non brahmin movement brahmanical domination and the tamil renaissance consequent upon the publication of tamil classical works provided the background for the origin of non brahmin movements in madras presidency justice party was the first non brahmin movement founded in madras presidency its attention was mainly focused on non brahmin upper caste semindars and commercial classes 
the self respective movement started by Periyar or E. V. Ramaswamy Naikir, his social base was also confined to upper caste non Brahmins and once it dravid, with the foundation of Dravida Kadagam, it also concentrated on narrow electoral politics. Now, we are going to analyze the over caste movement in South India. One of the most prominent over caste movement in South India was started by Sri Narayana Guru. First of all, we will be looking into the circumstances, circumstances, circumstances behind the creation of the over caste movement by Sri Narayana Guru. He founded Sri Narayana Dharma Paripalana Yogam, SNDP Yogam, Sri Narayana Dharma Paripalana Yogam. What was the circumstance behind the formation of SNDP by Sri Narayana Guru? The Kerala society during this time, that is the closing decades of the 19th century or the early 20th centuries, what was the condition of the Kerala society? During the second half of the 19th century and the early decades of 20th century, the society got divided and society got divided into a number of castes and sub castes, number of caste and sub castes. There were, there were many castes among a religion, for example, Hindus got divided into different castes, for example, Brahmins, Nayars, Kshatriya, Yidavas and depressed classes. The yeah. other two main religions were Christianity and Islam. This was the religious and caste division of Kerala during the second half of the 19th and early decades of 20th century. The Hindus got divided into a number of caste, Brahmins, Nayas, Kshatriya, Yidava and depressed classes. The other two main religions were Christianity and Islam. These ca castes again subdivided into a number of sub caste. Brahmins got divided into other sub caste, Nayas got divided into another sub caste. The Brahmins, the first three group were upper caste, they were considered as untouchables, untouchables, Yidavas and depressed classes were considered as untouchables in Kerala society. Yidava community, what was the condition of Yidava community as you have been told earlier? The Hindu religion got divided into a number of castes and sub castes. Brahmins, Kshatriyas, and Nayas were upper caste. 
Edamons and depressed classes were considered as lower caste and untouchables. Edama community who formed 38 percent of Hindu population and 25 percent of general population So, the Irava community was one of the largest, the largest communities in Kerala. 38 percent of the Hindus and 25 percent of the general population were the Iravas. However, they formed the majority of the population, they were considered as untouchables. They were not allowed to enter into temples. These Yiravans, even though they formed majority, even among the Hindu population as well as among the general population, they were not allowed to enter into temples, government schools, run government schools, run by government and the schools run by schools of upper caste Hindus they were not allowed to enter into temples schools run by government schools of upper caste Hindus approach roads of temples Their main business was 2D tapping, 2D tapping was the main occupational activity of the Irava community. It was in this background Sri Narayana Guru came forward for the emancipation of the Iravas. For the emancipation of Iravas, he founded, he was born in 1854, died in 1928. Srinarayana Guru emerged as the champion of the Iravas. Yudava community. Sri Narayana Guru emerged as the champion of the Yudava community. In 1903, Sri Narayana Guru founded SNDP. It has already been told that Sri Narayana Dharma Paribalana Yogam. It was founded by Sri Narayana Guru in 1903. What were the aims behind the creation of SNDP by Sri Narayana Guru? He founded for the social, economic and educational Affliftment of Iravas. It was for the social, economic, and educational affliftment of the Iravas. Sri Narayana Dharma Vajibalana Yogam was founded by Sri Narayana Guru in 1903. Now, we are going to analyze his ideas ideas of Sri Narayana Guru. He asked Irava community to end 
untouchability and untouchability with the cars below the Iravas, below the Iravas, which cars did form below the Iravas, depressed classes. First of all, Sinarayana Guru asked the Irava community to end the practice of untouchability, not touch me attitude with the depressed classes. The depressed classes were the lowest strata of Kerala society. Secondly, he built a handful of tumbles it has already been told that Iravas were not allowed to enter into the temples in order to worship the Irava community he founded a handful of temples but the foundation of temples by Sri Narayana Guru was opposed by the upper caste Hindus opposed by upper caste Hindus the most prominent event of this was Arivipuram Pradishta Arivipuram Pradishta where Srinarayana Guru consecrated consecrated the idols of Shiva way back in 1888 in Arivipuram Pradishta Sinarayana Guru consecrated the idols of Shiva and began to worship what did happen the upper caste Hindus opposed the consecration of the idol of Shiva and his worship by Sri Narayana Guru in 1888. To these upper caste Hindus, Sri Narayana Guru replied that he consecrated the idol of Yidava Shiva. He replied to these upper caste Hindus that he used to worship the idol of Irava Shiva. His third attention was the promotion of education among the Iravas. Promotion of education of Irava community. As you have been told earlier the Iravas were not admitted into the schools run by the government nor the upper caste Hindus. So, they did not have the opportunity for education. It was in this circumstance Sri Narayana Guru started schools for imparting education to Iravas. He also provided education to the depressed classes as well, not only to the Iravas, but depressed classes as well. Since the Iravas were not admitted into the schools run by the upper caste or government, 
they did not have the opportunity of learning. For giving education to the Irava community, he started a school in Shivagiri in 1904 for imparting education to the students belonging to Irava community. Fourthly, like Periyar, like Periyar, he also opposed the superstitious rituals and practices in Hindu society. He asked, like Periyar, he opposed rituals and beliefs, superstitious beliefs in Hindu society. He asked the people of Irava community not to conduct these kinds of rituals during marriage or funerals or religious worship. Sri Narayana Guru asked no rituals to be followed during social events like marriage or funerals or religious worship. He raised his powerful voice, he raised his powerful voice against the caste system. As you have been told earlier, Kerala society got divided into a number of castes and sub -castes. And the powerful voice of Srinarayana Guru was raised against the evil practice of caste system. And he even criticized Mahatma Gandhi for his faith in Chadurvarna. During the visit of Gandhi to Shivagiri March, it was the headquarters of Srinarayana Guru set up his headquarters at Shivagiri Mat in Varkala. During the visit of Gandhi to his Mat, Srinarayana Guru and Mahatma Gandhi engaged in arguments on Chadurvarna system. Under this fourfold division of society, the society got divided into four Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. Each were also given separate duties. What were the duties of the Brahmins? They served as teaching class and priestly work. Teaching class and priestly work were the duties entrusted to the Brahmins under Chadurvarna. Kshatriyas who used to work as rulers and engaged in warring activities, protection of his country was the important duty of Kshatriya. Vaishyas who mainly engaged in trade and agricultural practice. The Shudra whose duty was it to serve the other three higher Varnas. Brahmins mainly engaged in priestly and teaching works. Kshatriyas served as warriors and rulers. The Vaishyas engaged in agriculture, trade and commerce. Shudras were required to serve the other three higher Varnas. Gandhi and Sri Narayana Guru engaged in heated arguments on the question of Chadurvarna system. The slogan, the greatest slogan of Sri Narayana Guru
one cost one religion one cost and one god for mankind this was the slogan raised by sri narayana guru one religion one caste and one god for mankind as his headquarters as at shivagiri in varkala sri narayana institutions have been set up later for providing institute for providing education to people belonging to all castes and communities by in the second part we used to study sri narayana dharma parivalana yogam started by sri narayana guru we have gone through the circumstances behind the creation of sri narayana dharma parivalana yogam by sri narayana guru it was mainly because of the subordinate position of the iravas they were considered as untouchables they were not allowed to enter into temples or schools or the approach roads of temples again see this background sri narayana dharma parivalana yogam was started by sri narayana guru in 1903 he founded schools for imparting education to people belonging to irava community he also criticized the caste system opposed rituals and practices which had crept in hindu society no doubt the activities of sri narayana guru resulted in the emancipation of iravas emancipation iravas to a large extent emancipation of iravas was mainly possible because of the activities done by sri narayana guru now of course my other questions we are going to first question who were the founders of justice party second question what were the demands of justice party question number 3 name the newspaper started by periyar it was popularly known as e v periyar original name e v ramaswami naikar question number 4 what were the measures adopted by periyar for the emancipation of women
whose slogan is one religion one caste one god for mankind these are the questions you are expected to answer thank you dear students for watching my lecture thank you